Should you buy cheap gear? That is the question of the hour. And I went on Instagram and asked you guys what type of cheap gear is okay to buy and what sort of cheap gear should people avoid? And the answers I got were actually very interesting. But before we really dive in, I think we should first clarify what we mean by cheap. What exactly is cheap gear? After seeing a bunch of your responses and doing some of my own thinking, I came to the conclusion that a lesser price does not necessarily mean that a piece of gear is cheap. For example, the Rode NTG4 Plus is a shotgun microphone that costs around $400. Here we have the Rode Video Micro, and this comes in at around $60. Now in the context of this video, cheap gear is something that you would buy as an alternative to a regular product, with the hopes that it will fulfill the same purpose but at a lesser cost. But the Video Micro and the NTG4 Plus are two completely different products. You wouldn't necessarily use a Video Micro to fulfill the same purpose as a shotgun mic. However, what I would consider cheap gear is if instead of getting the $60 Rode Video Micro, which is actually very high quality and made out of metal, you went on Amazon and bought a $25 plastic knockoff. But that doesn't necessarily mean that all cheap gear is bad. Bad. This right here is a knockoff battery grip for my a7 III, which I'm actually really happy with. This cheap 5-in-1 reflector works great and only cost me like 20 bucks. The knockoff batteries I got for my Sony a6500 are garbage, but the ones I got for my a7 III are actually really good. Here's a cheap wireless remote trigger and receiver that ended up breaking the second time I used it, so I ended up getting the real thing instead. So pretty much based on the answers I got from you guys, as well as my own personal experiences, whether you should or shouldn't buy cheap gear is a very hard question to answer. So to make things a little bit easier, I've compiled a list of four factors that you should always think about when you're considering buying a cheaper piece of gear. Factor number one is risk tolerance. Whenever you buy a cheaper piece of gear or a knockoff, there is going to be some level of risk and there is a decent chance that it can end up failing you. So really it's up to you to decide if you're comfortable with assuming that risk and the idea that the cheaper gear that you buy could break very easily or just not be what you expected. Now moving along, factor number two is how long do you expect to keep the item that you're planning to buy? Things like tripods, gimbals, and even audio equipment like microphones, you can get a lot of longevity and many years out of these types of equipment as long as you don't go cheap. The tripod that my camera is sitting on right now was about $350 when I got it, but I've had it for over 10 years. Now ask yourself, what is the more worthwhile investment? Is it a $350 tripod that lasts 10 plus years, or is it an $80 tripod that might only last 10 months? But let's move on to factor number three, which is the price of the gear in question. And for this one, you have to think about how much money are you really saving by going with the cheaper option? Sometimes saving a few bucks isn't worth the drop off in quality. For example, it would be kind of silly to have a $2,000 camera and then an $800 lens and then stick a $20 ND filter in front of it. Or going back to our microphone example, is it really worth spending $25 on a plastic knockoff and you don't really know if it's going to work all that well? Or do you just bite the bullet and spend the $60 on a microphone that you know is high quality and you know it's going to work. Now obviously for each individual person, the answer is going to be different. For some people that $35 saved is really important, whereas for other people, they could deal with spending the extra $35 to ensure that they get a better quality product. Real quick interruption, I'm actually editing the video that you're currently watching and I quickly wanted to tell you about a cheap lens that I bought a while back that turned out to be a really good decision. It was a couple of years ago that I was getting really into filming real estate videos and my setup at the time was the Sony a6500 with the Sigma 16 mm f1.4. And as much as I love this setup, I always felt like the 16 mm wasn't quite wide enough for real estate videos. Now the lens that at the time I had my heart set on was the Sony 10 to 18 mm f4, which also had stabilization built into the lens. But the problem was that the lens would have cost me over a thousand dollars, which at the time I just couldn't stomach that kind of purchase. So instead I found this. And this right here is the Samyang 
12 millimeter f2, which is a fully manual prime lens, which means it's got no autofocus and of course no stabilization. Just like the name suggests, it has a fixed focal length at 12 millimeters, which means it doesn't zoom like the 10 to 18. But realistically for me and the type of real estate videos that I was making, 10 millimeters is unnecessarily wide. I also didn't need an 18 millimeter because I already have a perfectly good 16 right here and those focal lengths are already pretty similar. And if you think about it, I didn't really need the in-lens stabilization that the 10 to 18 offered anyway because the a6500 already has IBIS built into it. And on top of that, I wasn't really going to miss autofocus either because I don't actually use autofocus for real estate videos anyway. And in addition to all of that, like I said before, the Sony 10 to 18 is an F4, whereas the Samyang 12 millimeter is an F2, which makes it better in low light. So you could probably imagine how happy I was when instead of spending $1,000 on the Sony 10 to 18, I found the Samyang 12 millimeter on Craigslist for only a hundred bucks. Not only did this lens save me $900, but I got a ton of use out of it over the years. I was really happy with the way it performed and I could probably resell it for just as much, if not more than what I paid for it. But that being said, you should always be extremely careful when buying used gear. But this actually brings us to our fifth and final factor, which is to check the reviews. Now this one is pretty simple, but if you're unsure if a product is good or trustworthy, or if you're gonna be wasting your money, Read the reviews on Amazon or whatever website you're buying from and watch some reviews on YouTube and see what people honestly think about it. If the $15 knockoff battery for your camera is only getting a one star review on Amazon, then it's probably not a good investment. Now the purpose of this video isn't for me to sit here and tell you what you should and shouldn't buy. What I think would be really cool is if you guys went down to the comments and shared with others your experience with buying cheap gear, what sorts of things did you buy and you were happy with, what things didn't you like so much. So let's start a conversation and see if we can help each other save some more money and make some smarter investments. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.